Lesson six, leadership. 10 lessons in leadership. The old direct selling saying says, lead, follow, or get out of the way. Oh, I don't have what it takes to be a leader is an all too common comment from prospects and people who are new to direct selling. This is not true. We are all leaders. If you're married, have children, have siblings or friends, if you do volunteer work, if you belong to a club, or have lived in a neighbourhood for more than three months, then you've served in some leadership capacity at one time or another. The issue isn't whether you're a leader or not. The issue is your level of effectiveness. That is, whether as a leader you're bad, fair, good or great. The purpose of this section is to give you information that's really very important. Let's say it's key information that will enable you to raise your leadership ability a notch or two notches from fair to good or from good to great. Definition of leadership. Most people mistake leadership for management, but there's a big difference. Management deals with the things we do, how we produce things or do things better, faster or cheaper. But leadership focuses on who we are, our motivations, our actions, character, commitment, the mission and teamwork. James C. Hunter, the author of The Servant and the World's Most Powerful Leadership Principle, defines leadership as the skill of influencing people to work enthusiastically towards goals identified as being for the common good with character that inspires confidence. Let's look at the qualities of a leader. Leadership style can vary widely. Former Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau with his elitist background was flamboyant and often controversial. The US President Abraham Lincoln was outgoing. He loved to swap jokes. He played up his backwards upbringing. Although they had vastly different personalities, they shared certain traits that all leaders have in common, including the following. All leaders demonstrate a bias for action, the ability to delegate and empower others, willingness to give recognition and credit to subordinates, an eagerness to accept responsibility, <clears throat> courage to take calculated risks, resilience in the face of failure, passion for lifelong learning, calmness during a crisis, ability to solve problems rather than run from them, a willingness to walk the walk, not just talk the talk, an ability to create a vision and communicate that vision to their followers, unwavering belief in their mission and the discipline to do what needs to be done to accomplish short-term and long-term goals. That's what leaders have. In direct selling, leadership is everything. Leadership is synonymous with success for one very big reason. Direct sellers are independent sales contractors, which means they can be influenced to take certain actions. But unlike salaried employees, direct sellers well, they can't be in intimidated into action by threats of cutting their salary or by firing them. As a result, in direct selling, your income and your career security are largely dependent on your effectiveness as a leader. The bigger your organisation, the bigger your paycheck. The more solid and committed your organisation, the more stable your business. And the only way to build it big and solid is to become an effective leader. What I'm now going to go through are 10 lessons in leadership that you need to put in practice and teach your people in your organisation. Remember, direct selling is a copycat business. So the more you preach and teach and live these lessons, the more they'll be actualised throughout your organisation. Here's lesson one. 
To lead, you must first follow. Before becoming a parent, you must first become a ch- be a child. Before becoming a teacher, you must first be a student. Same principle applies to direct selling. Because direct selling is an unconventional business, new people have to go through a learning curve. They need education, training, mentoring and product knowledge. Some people seek and accept leadership sooner than others, but all leaders in direct selling must begin their careers as followers. The great thing about this industry is that new people don't have to spend months or years becoming experts before they can lead others. If someone had a great product experience or immediately sees the big picture and pounces on the opportunity, their energy and enthusiasm will influence others to look at the business. But as their organisation grows, their leadership skills must grow as well. Lesson two, leaders are made, not born. In the best-selling book, Developing the Leader Within, by John Maxwell, who's a leading authority on leadership, he tells a story about a group of tourists visiting a quaint village. As the group walks past an old man smoking a pipe, a tourist shouts out, Any great men or women born in this small village? Nope, only babies, replied the old man. (laughs) Maxwell's point is that leaders are made, not born. Nurses don't walk through the nursery at the hospital identifying leaders with blue wristbands and the followers with yellow ones. Like every other skill, leadership is learned. Just as people aren't born airline pilots or doctors or welders or accountants, they aren't born leaders either. That doesn't mean that everyone can become the CEO of Microsoft. Along with leadership, those kinds of positions require a fairly complex combination of rare talents and burning ambition. But each of us can learn skills and strategies that will help us fully exploit our innate leadership potential. Lesson three, speed of the group goes by the speed of the leader. The most effective leaders lead by example. Their credo is, do as I do, not just as I say. Unfortunately, in direct selling, many organisations lose momentum and fail to grow or worse, start to disintegrate because the leaders fall into a common trap called the management mode. In the management mode, leaders gradually change their leadership credo to Do as I say, not as I do. They stop recruiting and they start telling others to recruit. They mistake activity with productivity. They spend time building their egos instead of building their business. They overcomplicate their business and get away from seeing the people and telling the story, which are the basics of the business. In the management mode, leaders talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk anymore because the the followers imitate the actions of the leaders, they also start managing and they stop recruiting. And their people do the same. Before very long, inactivity and apathy sense in. And the organisation stalls and then shrinks. Lesson four. Leaders are lifelong learners. To be conscious that you are ignorant of the fact is a great step to knowledge. (laughs) That was said by Benjamin Disraeli, former Prime Minister of England. This is certainly true of direct selling, because to become successful, new recruits have to discard their preconceived notions about how to build a business and open their minds to a markedly different way of distributing products and services to customers. Direct selling is an unconventional business. The more receptive people are to accepting new ideas and learning the do's and don'ts of their business, then the sooner they'll see good results. A person's success in the business really depends on much more how they're willing to grow in the future than what they've accomplished in the past. The good news is that it doesn't take much training to get up and running in the business because the business is mostly about leading managing and motivating people. 
By necessity, leaders can never stop learning. To paraphrase John Wooden, the legendary college basketball coach, the real learning begins after you know it all. Lesson five. Leadership is character in action. Image is what people think we are. Character is what we really are. The best definition of character is also the one most repeated. It's this. Character is what you do when no one else is looking. These days we seldom use the words high moral character to, to describe people, but that's what character is all about. Treating people like the way you want to be treated. Being honest to a fault. Refusing to give in to temptation. Crafting win-win situations in life and in business. Standing up for what you believe in and being a giver, not a taker. According to a survey of 1,300 top business executives, integrity is the business quality most necessary for success in business. Of 16 traits listed in the survey, 71% of respondents put integrity in the number one spot. Integrity and character are one and the same. Saying and doing the right thing and having your words and deeds match up. In direct selling, where trust is earned and re-earned on a daily basis, integrity isn't just important. Integrity is everything. Lesson six. Leaders are big picture people. Leaders are visionaries who see in their mind's eye the results of their efforts months and years into the future. Leaders, leaders think in pictures. They're imagining what can be instead of what is. And they impart that vision to their followers. To paraphrase John Maxwell, foresight is the lead in the word leader. Leaders who lose foresight and allow events to dictate the future are leaders in name only. Remember the definition of a leader? the skill of influencing people to work enthusiastically towards goals for the common good. It's easy to slip out of your leadership role and become a small picture person consumed by everyday distractions. Small picture people focus on the here and now, not the when. They focus on the problem, not the solution. They focus on daily struggles, not, not the outcome. Small picture people are preoccupied with the how-to. Big picture people are focused on the why. As a leader, it's your job to paint the big picture and to keep it in front of your organisation so that they're constantly reminded where they're going and why it will all be worth the struggle when they arrive. Lesson seven. Leaders don't mistake activity for productivity. Here's a frequently quoted axiom in the direct selling industry. Some people make things happen. Some people watch what happens. Some people look around and ask, what happened? So which kind of person best describes you? If you make things happen, there's a good chance you'll do well in direct selling, but only if you make productive things happen. Unlike traditional business, where you can go through motions from time to time and still get your paycheck, if you don't perform in direct selling, simply, you don't make money. Over time, the ultimate measure of performance in direct selling is your paycheck. It's that simple. In direct selling, you can make excuses or you can make money. You just can't do both at the same time. Now, we, we talked earlier about the management mode trap, telling others what to do instead of what needs to be done, which is prospecting, retailing and recruiting, and sponsoring. Unsuccessful distributors don't get the results they'd like because all too often they mistake activity for productivity. If you retail a product to three people in one day, that's productivity. If you spend the day building shelves in your garage to s store the product, that's mistaking activity for productivity. Lesson eight, leaders listen. 
Carl Rogers, one of the most influential psychologists in history, concluded that listening is the greatest tool we have for releasing human potential in others. As Steve Shapiro says in Listening for Success, to listen is to care. In direct selling, as in life, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. It follows then that to become an effective leader, you have to become an active listener. Shapiro points out that listening is not the same thing as hearing. Hearing is a, a physiological process. Listening is a mental and emotional process. You hear with your ears. You listen with your mind and your heart. The biggest irony we have about listening is that we listen least when we should be listening the most. If our prospect says she doesn't like direct selling because she doesn't like sales, instead of asking more questions to help her understand her objection, we have a natural tendency to talk more so we can overcome their objection. Mm -mm -mm. Bad strategy. You cannot motivate someone into doing something they don't want to do. So to find out what really motivates people, you have to ask and then listen. Lesson nine. Leaders solve problems. Dr. Charles Lever opens his best-selling book, If You Can't Climb the Wall, Build a Door, with a story about Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, who was approached during his morning walk by a stressed-out friend. Problems, problems, I'm fed up with problems, said the friend. If I could get rid of all my problems, Norman, I'd gladly donate $5,000 to your favourite charity. What a confidence, Dr. Peel said. Why, just yesterday, I was at a place where thousands of people live and not a single one has problems. Would you like to go there? Oh, I sure would, the man said enthe enthusiastically. Great, said Dr. Peel. What time do you want to meet me tomorrow at Woodlawn Cemetery? Because the only people I know who don't have problems are dead. Leaders understand that problems are part of the leadership landscape. We, we can't avoid them. We can't ignore them without their getting worse. So we might as well solve them. Problems are only opportunities in work clothes. That, that was said by the US industrialist Henry J. Kaiser. Leaders solve problems. And in the process, they uncover opportunities they didn't know existed. Now, Lesson 10. Leaders serve and empower. A lot has been written about servant leaders in recent years. At first glance, the phrase servant leader may look like a contradiction in terms. How can a person lead and serve at the same time? Maxwell contends that servant leaders put others ahead of themselves by being aware of people's needs, available to help them and able to accept their desires as important. Sounds like a description of a good parent, doesn't it? And for good reason. Good leaders, like good parents, nurture and guide their children with the ultimate goal of making them strong, self-supporting and independent adults, which is the goal every sponsor has for every recruit. Servant leadership is not to be confused with doing someone's work for them, however. Servant leaders give a hand up, not a hand out. They are, they are welcome mats, but never doormats. Servant leaders say yes to helping people, but no to being used or exploited. In conclusion, effective leadership is about helping yourself by helping others help themselves. Zig Ziglar best sums up effective leadership in direct selling with his often quoted statement, you can get all you want in life if you help enough people get what they want. So that's it. I hope that you've managed to get a few things that you find are relevant and valuable for you and then put them into practice. Now we're going to move on to the next session.